So I want to turn to Joseph Scott Morgan. He is a forensic death investigator who is one of the leading experts in the coroner system in the United States and one of my good friends. Joseph, great to see you. Okay, let me first start here. I don't understand why he's been in Massapequa. If you listen to the, the evidence that he had been searching about the killer and felt that the heat might be on him, why did he spend his whole life here? I was shocked he's been there this whole time if he really did commit these crimes. Uh, what's he going to do? Pick up and leave, Jesse? I mean, he's got an established architecture practice. He's a Long Islander, as but he you admitted. Allegedly mentioned. killed he three people. Admitted. Why wouldn't he, yeah, he take off? Yeah, well, you would think so. But maybe, you know, look, this is all speculation at this point, but maybe it's a big game to him. Maybe he's playing cat and mouse. Look, this guy, you know, what was so fascinating about this, Jesse, is kind of the, the linear deposition of these bodies along that coastline that you know better than anybody. You grew up in that region. And that area right there, and it's not that far away from his home, you know, not being a Long Islander, uh, you know, I had to map this thing out. He's 26 minutes from his street to this location. It's a very specific location that he would have had knowledge of and been very familiar. And what we do know about serial perpetrators is that they like to hunt and they like to perpetrate within those areas that they feel the most comfortable. And it seems as though if the police have the right guy, and it seems like they might, that 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 truth, that one truth does hold true here. I have to tell you, the police work here, exceptional, really Un exceptional, unbelievable. Because when we talk about cold cases, and even the Brian Koberger case, when that probable cause affidavit right. came in, I mean, just terrific police work. From what you saw, whether it's the, the, the DNA from the pizza box that matches up to him, that matches up to the hair that was found in one of the bodies, his wife's hair that was allegedly on or near the victims, the car, what stands out to you as the strongest piece of evidence? Okay, first off, kudos to the police, because you know what they were able to do that a lot of people can't in cases like this? Keep their mouth shut and keep it close to the vest. That's mm. a big deal. That's an Achilles heel in a lot of cases. Nothing got out. I mean, we were all gobsmacked when this happened. I think probably that hair. And what makes this unique is that according to what we're hearing, it ain't his hair. It's a hair that he's domiciled. It's a hair originated from an individual he's domiciled with. And it's degraded hair, degraded DNA. They had to hold on to it. Remember, the science actually had to catch up with this case. We didn't do mitochondrial DNA yeah. back in 2007. So that's very key. And also this discarded pizza box, Jesse. Oh, my God. They sat on this guy. They watched him. They watched his every move. So the circumstantial uh, indicators here pointed to him. The police just sat back and they waited. They waited for that opportunity where they were going to put their hands on that thing that would tie him back. I don't know what other DNA that they have that is a specific tie back because that box contained well, his DNA. There is something there. And I, I wanted to ask you about the way the bodies were found. If we can play yeah. this, this is number one. Um, this explains, this DA Tierney explaining how the victims were bound. Right. Uh, they were buried in a similar fashion, in a similar location, um, uh, in, a, in a similar way. Uh, all the women were petite. Uh, they were, um, they, they all did the same thing for a living. Uh, they all advertised the same way. Uh, and there were uh, immediately there were similarities with regard uh, to the to the uh, the crime scenes. Uh, all the women's all the women were bound at the head, uh, at the midsection, uh, uh, or at the chest, and later at the legs. So Joseph, I'm not going to go through the internet searches that he allegedly made on a burner phone because they are just absolutely sickening. But I'll tell you this much: the way the bodies were found seems to be very consistent with those searches. What do you take away from the the way these uh, bodies were these people were killed? Yeah, the, the first person that comes to mind, Jesse, is is by and torture kill is Dennis yep. Rader. You know, when you begin to think about. Uh, these various uh, points along the continuum that he had an interest in. That's as far as I'll go with that. But what I will say, when it comes to these bindings, that gentleman was very specific. They are bound. And so those knots in particular are going to be particular to the individual that tied them. It's kind of like a signature. Also, when we get we look back also, we don't know all of the evidence that they have at this point. Think about those burlap bags. How often have we heard about burlap bags in all the cases that you and I have covered? That's something very unique to this individual. Did they come from the same manufacturing lot, perhaps? Is that something that the police have where they manipulated or cut yeah. in a particular way in order to facilitate the storage of a body? And I Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider.
And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.